Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Make your presence known among us, Lord Jesus. Speak, breathe into our hearts your word. And grant us, Lord, ears to hear. Lord, help us to remember all the blessings that you give to us. Speak into our lives in these moments. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Be seated. <clears throat> so I was out for a run this past week in town, and I was struck by the differences of the people I encounter. The differences in the ways they greet you. On this particular run, I passed one woman with a dog on a bench down there by Liberty Pond. I said hello as I was approaching her on the run. Her expression never changed. There was no smile, no hint of acknowledgement of me. She simply turned back to look at the pond without responding to my greeting at all. But then a little later, a woman was in her yard by the sidewalk that I was running by and she was talking to some people and she greeted me and said, how are you doing? Now this was near the end of my run approaching the three mile mark and so I said, I'm hanging in there. To which she responded, can I get you some water? I guess I look pretty bad because it was one of those hot days. How nice to offer water. The first woman, who knows, she might have been deep in thought, having a bad day. But really in our world today, there are so many different people, different kinds of people, sometimes great divisions among people, where people in one group never speak to people in other groups, outside their groups. And sometimes, as we know, especially in politics, sometimes they don't speak to one another at all outside their group, but they speak about one another in public, personally attacking others. Which is why many of us welcome the calls for greater civility after the horrific assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Trump's Republican nomination acceptance speech has been described as much more subdued than usual. President Biden called him and they had a cordial phone conversation. Attack ads were temporar temporarily pulled down. This has been a moment where things were at least a little more civil than usual. But we know it won't last. The rhetoric's already becoming more bitter Personal attacks are coming once again. There's even fighting within the Democratic Party about whether Biden should step aside or not. Don't you just sometimes ask like the bumper sticker, why can't we all just get along? There is division and animosity throughout our world this morning. There are wars. China is saber rattling near Taiwan. Russia continues its violence against the people of Ukraine. Israel and Hamas continue their war. And in this country, demonstrations about that war and anti-Semitism abound. This isn't new. They've been fighting for centuries in the Middle East. Anti-Semitism has been around for several millennia, dating back at least as far as ancient Egypt, where Pharaoh enslaved the people and then at one point tried to kill all the male babies. Countries have been invading other nations for eons, fighting, bigotry, hatred, and divisions over race, religion, ideology, and politics have been with us throughout human history. But there is a place, a place where the things that separate us from one another have been torn down. This is a place where people have been brought together in unity, a place where there is great potential for love, forgiveness, and where the dignity of every human being is respected. There is a place where peace reigns supreme. Interested? Wouldn't you like to go to such a place? How remarkable that there is such a place where we all can get along. And the Apostle Paul writes about it today in his letter to the Ephesians chapter 2. Paul says, in that place, those who were far off have been brought near. 
and the wall that divided people has been torn down. Paul describes this as a place where Jew and Gentile can come together, a place where even racial and religious differences have been transformed, a place where people have been brought together in unity. Look with me at that reading. Paul is speaking to a divided city. When he is, was there preaching the good news of Jesus Christ, the makers of idol trinkets that would be sold to pilgrims who came to Ephesus to worship at the temple of Artemis, those craftsmen started a riot. They were fearing that what Paul was doing would ruin their business. There was great division in Ephesus, as Paul writes to them. Division between Jew and Gentile was extreme. Gentiles persecuted Jews, and Jews held Gentiles in contempt. There was a literal wall that Paul might have in mind when he uses the image of walls being torn down. They had built a wall in the temple complex that kept Gentiles from entering an area that was restricted for Jewish men. The wall kept the Gentiles from getting too close to the Holy of Holies the sanctuary in the temple where God was said to dwell. The Jews thought the Gentiles would defile the area, and so they built a wall. Now, a sign actually that was on that wall has been excavated in our time. A sign on the wall that separated the court of the Gentiles from where Jewish men could go, and this is what it reads. No foreigner is to enter within the forecourt or the balustrade around the sanctuary. Whoever is caught will have himself to blame for his subsequent death. Besides all the holiness codes, the kosher laws in the Old Testament, there was even a literal wall that divided people. And so Paul, speaking here in Ephesians, says, God has torn down the walls. This is so remarkable that to a divided people in Ephesus, Paul writes, with one command that overarches this whole complex paragraph. It can all be summed up with just one word. Paul commands them and us to remember. Remember what Christ has accomplished through the cross. Paul says, many of you were far from God. You were strangers to God and his ways, but through Christ's work on the cross, you have been brought near. Many have been brought near to God. That's what Jesus came to do, connect humanity with God. Christ has brought all who will receive his love and forgiveness, extended through the spilling of his blood. All who will receive it have been brought near, brought to a place where the wall that divides has been torn down. The power of the cross tears down the walls that divide humanity and brings all who follow Christ to a place where the unity that God has intended from the beginning is established. See what God has done. Paul says to remember two things. Through the cross, Jesus has brought us together. He has made the two people groups one. He says, look at the, in the middle of that paragraph, look at what he says. He says, for he is our peace in his flesh. He has made both groups into one, broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. That's the first thing. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, has taken that hostility, has torn down the wall that separates Jew from Gentile. Jesus' work on the cross brings humanity together. We are all equal at the foot of the cross. We're all sinners who need forgiveness. And we come just as we are to receive the forgiveness of God and be brought near to God. The stronghold that sin had on us, separating us from God, has been broken by the power of the cross. In Christ, we who were estranged from God have been brought near. That's the first thing, but wait, there's more. Not only has God removed the walls that divide, taken away the hostility, giving us peace, he's done something even more. As amazing and significant as that is, it won't produce lasting unity. We're still sinners. Forgiven sinners, yes, but we're still sinners. We're still self-absorbed. We're still seeking our own self-interest, still highlighting the differences between ourselves and others. The removal of the hostility does not bring permanent unity. Something more is needed. God did more through the cross. 
Look at what Paul says. He goes on writing that in Christ, God has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross. The power of the cross has not just removed the hostility and torn down the walls. The power of the cross is creative. It has created something new, a new humanity. The power of the cross in Jesus Christ has made us new. God makes us new. He renews us, creating a new humanity through the work of Christ. In this world, we can't all get along. Isn't it obvious? Doesn't the history of the world provide plenty of evidence? Doesn't the division of our time show it? The good news is that Jesus came to do something about it. He came to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. Unity beyond division, creating one new humanity out of the divided humanity is exactly what Jesus Christ came to do. He came to bring unity. He came to tear down the walls that separate us, to remove the hostility. But even more than that, he did what was needed to make it last. He made us new. In Christ, we're brought together as a new creation, a new humanity, the body of Christ, members of one another. Wonder of all wonders, the power of the cross has made us new. In him, we can all get along. In him, we are one. We are his body, the new temple, where God dwells, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Jesus Christ himself, the cornerstone, and the people of God rise to become the new temple where God dwells. The Lord is present among us. He's present in his people gathered. And we are remade into a spiritual temple, something new, where the presence of God dwells. What this means is that for everyone who comes to Jesus Christ, who acknowledges him as the Son of God, who died on the cross for their sins, for all those people, for all of us, we're made new into a people who aren't separated by walls. Walls, you know, they divide, but they also hide. Walls block your view. They keep us from seeing one another as we truly are. There are walls of self-absorption. There are walls of difference, of race, religion, ideology, personality. Walls that divide us because all we can see is the way that others are not like us. But the power of the cross is that in Christ, the wall comes down. Nothing can separate us now from the love of God, not sin, not any power, not any spiritual power. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And that brings all of us who are far, near, and we come together near to the same place, to a place where we can see with clarity ourselves and one another made new. This is the place at the foot of the cross there we can see each other, love each other, precisely because and only because of Jesus' work on the cross. The power of the cross sets us free from sin and the walls that divide. It makes us a new and unified people in Christ. This is the place, the only place, where true and lasting unity abides. In Jesus Christ. Now that sounds exclusive, but it's not. It's inclusive. It's invitational to this place of peace and unity. Everyone, everyone is invited. No one's excluded. Not pagan worshipers of Artemis, not Jews, not Gentiles, not black, not Hispanic, not Asian, not indigenous, not white people, not introverts, not extroverts, not those who dream and have their heads in the clouds, not those who are detail-oriented, not LGBTQ people, not straight people, not Republicans, not Democrats, not anyone. No one is excluded. All are invited to the place of peace and renewal where the walls have come down. All who are willing, every single 
one. You are invited to that place. You are made new by the blood of Christ. I have to tell you what a joy this has been in my life. I've been serving Christ in ministry on college campuses since the 80s, in churches during my time in seminary and since ordination in 1999. And through all of that time in ministry, all of those places, one of the most amazing, heartwarming, transformative blessings I have found is when I get put in a small group with someone I don't get along with. I've seen it through the years, time and again. I've seen the walls come down. As we come together in faith, together seeking Jesus Christ, we come to see one another as we truly are, renewed in Christ, and time and again, the love of Christ transformed us. We came to love and accept, even appreciate each other in Christ. And I share that with you because I want you to know this is real. I've experienced it. We can be unified in Christ. But you may be saying, come on, Kent. This can't be real. Where is the unity of which you speak? The reason we don't see it more. The problem comes when we don't heed what Paul is saying here. When we don't remember. The problem comes when we forget that the walls have come down and we act as if the walls are still up. So the message comes to you this morning through the Spirit present with us. When you feel beaten up in this world, alone, isolated, frustrated with division and bickering, when you feel discouraged and beaten down by the division in our nation, when there's someone you don't get along with, even when there's a disagreement with someone close to you, Take Paul at his word, that primary overarching com command of this complex paragraph. Remember. Remember the cross of Jesus Christ has torn the walls down and has made us one, removing the hostility. He has made everything new. A temple where the presence of God dwells, built upon the cornerstone of Jesus Christ who made it all possible. There is a place where humanity has been made new, where people can see each other as they truly are, where the unity that God intends prevails, a place where human beings dwell together as one body. There is a place, and it's right here, where we are now, together at the foot of the cross. Hold this good news dear in this divided world and remember. To him be the honor, glory, power, and praise now and forever.